Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you can hear me well. This is the first time that I'm using a new microphone and I installed it into my uh, helmet because otherwise the, uh, the wind that the GoPro picks up is, is just crazy. And of course I hope you still hear the motorbike because this is my new BMW S1000XR. Um, if you can see it of course because the GoPro isn't the best at night and I have it on 60 FPS so I should probably change that because 60 FPS is a lot more light and there's not so much light so it'll probably just look darker anyway I'm here in Amsterdam driving to my workshop in which I will start to day cut the exhaust on this BMW it is on the platform of the S1000 engine um, so it shares a lot of racing components it's tuned a bit differently and I also have to get the fuel map uh, and air intake and all that stuff readjusted because now the idle is a bit weird. It, uh, it seems to be running too lean and that's because, well I read, it's because the Euro 5 uh, emission laws in Europe uh, and that's why BMW could only export this bike if they were to run it pretty lean. So on the lower RPMs it's real... Uh, feels a bit shaky and there we are in the garage with the BMW and would you look at that beautiful middle linkage pipe supplied by Dominator exhausts from Poland beautiful stainless steel very nice everything made on size comes with instructions and everything and we're going to install this where the catalytic converter is I already have a sport exhaust, sounds great, but I want a bit more noise. So I'm gonna have to work with that. And there's a couple of things in between. There's the pedal unit right here, which we have to remove. So the whole exhaust is gonna come off. This one's going out of the system. Then the bottom unit right here, catalytic converter, is gonna be cut out. The reason why is because this thing gets super hot. It heat soaks the engine, it's right underneath the oil pan and I'm not too big of a fan of it. So I'm gonna remove that, uh, but first I have to remove all the panels. I already have a couple of them removed, top ones here. I'm following instructions from a book I got from uh, Haynes from the UK, I believe. Really good book, definitely recommend it. They sell a bunch of manuals, shop manuals on all sorts of motorbikes, so that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, I already removed some panels up here, this one and the one on the other side. And basically I just have to remove the side panels, the bottom cowl, and then I have enough space to get to the exhaust and the headers, because I have to drop the headers on this one. So the exhaust headers that are behind the radiator right here have to drop down. I also have to loosen the radiator, uh, the oil cooler. And uh, yeah, it's quite a lot of work to do, but uh, I think it's definitely worth it. And then once it's on the ground, I can start cutting. And I have to see if I'm gonna cut if it's on the ground or if I have to remove the exhaust completely and also undo the O2 sensors. Uh, but I'll see once I'm uh, there. First up, removing sides. All right, it's one panel removed from the side. It is a bit weird how they do uh, the installation because they're hiding a lot of stuff, a lot of bolts behind the panels, which makes it a bit more difficult. There's a lot of cable work here, Jesus. Uh, but yeah, there's basically a tiny screw here that's hidden behind the red panel that you can't really get to. And the panel you have to kind of click out of place and then use a small screwdriver such as this to get to it and then the whole panel comes off. You have to disconnect your indicators and the hoses that are hooked into the pipes or into the little clamps. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm now gonna try the same on the other side. There we go. Panels are out. The indicators in place, which is also good, of course. Remove the hose. And there we go. That's the other panel removed. Okay, this is definitely going to be a difficult one because there's a couple of things I can do. I can make it uh, easier for myself to get to the headers by removing the radiator and the oil cooler. Um, but that involves 
also loosening a lot of clamps cables seals all the things up here so i think it will become quite a mess and also quite difficult to put everything back together so what i'm trying to think of is is there a way that i can get up here up to the headers maybe with a, a socket that uh, tilts and then going from the bottom up plugging into the side it's going to be quite a difficult one after checking out the headers over here with this tool long extension and a swivel joint on there i can get to the outer nuts but not the inner two nuts um, there's a couple nuts on the middle section basically right behind here and there's a strange like middle pipe section now you can't see it let me get a flashlight out there we go you see there's a, a strange middle pipe right there that bmw put in and it blocks the path for this one to go through which is super annoying uh, so I have no choice but to undo the radiator. So I completely forgot that I have a manual here about the exhaust system and silencer removal. It shows me exactly where to get everything loose so that I can get the radiator out of the way and drop down the entire headers and the exhaust system. Bottom radiator protector is removed. Of course, there's lots of shit in my radiator. And uh, I'm gonna take the little bottom plug here out, that one too, and the screws to take the cover off. And then, like I said, I just need enough space to pull this forward and I'm good. So I just uh, removed the front radiator cover. And I found this nasty dent. That's real nasty. So I hope that's not gonna be a problem in the future. I have to lower this socket right here and then the unit should come with some free play as this one already has um, and did the clips up there these bolts you can just leave in actually they're just held in place with these like clips and plates and you undo the clip plate comes off and the whole unit comes out after going back and forth i have a bit more play now i got this one removed out of the socket by pushing it outwards towards myself and then lifting the whole unit up out of the socket so that the pump and everything is still there. Now I have a bit more free play and I'm pretty sure in here I can access all of the nuts from both sides to disconnect the manifold. New problem. I forgot about these. You see those nuts right there? Those units they are copper um, 10 millimeter 12 points uh, nuts and they need a socket uh, that is 12 points and my sockets are all six points they're hex i need torx so 12 point sockets because these units it's a it's a 10 pointer or a, well it's a 10 mil but not six but uh, 12 points in there so i cannot get the headers off for now at least um it's about 10 in the evening so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move on to the servo unit get that removed because i can run even without it no problem um, and then tomorrow i'm gonna go to the auto shop and see if they have a 10 mil 12 point nut all right we're back next day and look what i got the correct sockets just got a bunch of sizes because they were in the discount with 12 points on the inside so these should fit of course i hope should <laughs> um, and of course i still have to figure out a way to get properly in between there i guess with this swivel setup something like that but uh, yeah let's, let's try and make this work oh there we go motherfucker so these are the little guys i gotta remove that's one i have uh two four six eight nine more to go lovely very nice 
all eight nuts came loose. Um, I did have to get a bit creative with the long bar from the bottom in um, using the swivel mount. Um, in the end I got it loose. What's kind of annoying though is that I bought these 12 points specifically for these because I use regular hexagon for everything and since these are copper and well as you can see they're super easy to damage uh, if it focuses no it doesn't well they're super easy to damage so I'm gonna be replacing these with steel ones stainless steel ones um, I don't know why they use this maybe because it's it deforms quicker so it, it latches on stronger or something or it doesn't rust I don't know weird choice I'm gonna replace them with something else because I don't want to run into this problem again look at this big old Torx extension just to get to the bolts here in the back on this side it's easier where the chain is but on the other side it's super handy to have this long unit just hop it in yeah, there we go uh, my hands are so dirty now I also cut myself I found out there was like blood everywhere but I didn't even see it so I just put some tape on it there we go another bolt loosened and so far no complaining now oh is it gonna fit oh of course it doesn't fit fucking kickstand is in the way so i'm gonna have to put it on the rear stand flip in the kickstand and then get the exhaust out of the way yeah. there we have it one exhaust voila so now i'm gonna have to cut from this weld point 55 millimeters inwards it's about here on both sides place the middle pipe in between hang on to this one for any future needs if necessary nice and crusty and then put it all back together Bada bim bada boom, there we go. Middle pipe is on, everything is mounted up. I had to use some persuasion here, some sanding down here and there to kind of slide these on. It's a lot more difficult when there's two pipes that it needs to connect to, rather than just one center pipe. Um, I'm guessing BMW has a reason for this. I don't know why they just didn't go for one single pipe here. They went for two separate ones. Anyway, um, now it's pretty much everything I just did in reverse. So I'm gonna slide this one back in, connect the headers, use different nuts because screw those. Um, and then, yeah, tighten everything up, get the radiators back into place, mount everything up. I am still not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might just wait for my OBD reader to come in to see what kind of code it throws and leave it here for now because when you turn the ignition on, you just see a cable like beep beep, like it just does a check and that's it. And probably during driving it it extends it a little bit or something but um doesn't do anything uh, other than that so it literally just gives a signal to the computer i could even mount this up to like an original plate make a little plate for it and then just cut the wires and seal the tips so i, I would literally leave the computer in and make it think that it's there but even though it's not um so yeah i'm gonna see how that goes but first up getting this bad boy back in all the panels are back on, looking great. Pretty easy to put the panels back on once you know how to take them off. And um, everything tightened up also in the front with the radiator. I just have to put the bottom panel in. And here you can see I just zip tied the existing uh, exhaust valve parts to the bolt there. I might just keep it like this. I mean, honestly, it's not that bad. Um, but uh, yeah, better to remove it, of course. So I'll wait for the computer, and until then, this will do. And uh, yeah, right now, place back the exhaust, and then check out how it sounds. Motorbike is on, everything is back in position, including the nice exhaust. 
Got an error, of course, for the fuel. So let's see what noise it makes. Super plus. Oh, this thing's a bit fucked up. Damn, man, I gotta fix everything, don't I? You sure it's the other way around, like this? Wow, I fix. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Sounds very nice. <laughs> Definitely have to get the fuel map adjusted. <laughs> it sounds like a chopper. But damn. Oh, it is loud. It is very loud. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely louder and um, the high pitch is finally there. I was missing that. I mean, it's an S1000. You gotta have the high pitch. If you don't have a high pitch, then what kind of bike you got, you know? 